Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Fanny Willis? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, then move to my analysis. Fanny Willis was born on October 27, 1971, in Inglewood, California. Her father was a founder of the Black Panthers, but eventually moved to Washington, D.C. and worked as a criminal defense attorney. Her mother moved back to California after her parents divorced, and Fanny was mostly raised by her father. After graduating from high school, Fanny earned a bachelor's degree and moved to Atlanta, Georgia. In 1996, she earned a law degree. She worked for 16 years as a prosecutor in Fulton County. She was elected district attorney in 2020. In 2021, Fannie launched a criminal investigation into Donald Trump and several of his allies because they allegedly tried to influence election officials in Georgia. In November of that year, she hired an attorney named Nathan Wade to lead the prosecution. In August 2023, Donald Trump was arrested after Fannie's office indicted him. 18 others were also indicted. The case against Donald Trump and his co-defendants ran into a bit of a problem because Fanny was accused of having a romantic relationship with Nathan Wade. So she was having sex with a lawyer in charge of Donald Trump's prosecution. Fanny admitted that she had a romantic relationship with Nathan, but said that it started in 2022 after he was hired and ended in the summer of 2023. That still doesn't look too good for Fanny, but it's better than if the relationship had existed earlier. The defense argued that Fanny's behavior represented a conflict of interest because it supplied Fanny and Nathan with a financial incentive to make the case against Donald Trump take longer than necessary. Since being hired, Nathan had been paid more than $650,000. In February 2024, a hearing on this topic was held in Fulton County because the defense filed motions to disqualify Fanny. The hearing dealt with two critical issues, whether the relationship between Fanny and Nathan predated Nathan being hired, and whether Fanny financially benefited from hiring him because Nathan paid for expensive vacations that they took together. Here is a summary of that hearing. As far as the first issue, the timing of the romance, an estranged friend and former coworker testified that the relationship between Fanny and Nathan began in late 2019. Nathan testified that the relationship started in March of 2022. Fanny said that it started in April of 2022. It's clear that someone is lying in this case or had a memory failure. Nathan Wade was divorced. In the divorce proceedings, he made filings in which he stated that he did not have a sexual relationship with a person other than his wife during their marriage or when they were separated. One of these filings was made in May of 2023, which makes it appear as though Nathan was having an honesty-challenged moment. Nathan later amended the filings to reflect the truth. As far as the second issue, the alleged financial benefit, Fanny and Nathan testified that Nathan initially paid for the vacations, but Fanny repaid him in cash for approximately half the expenses that he incurred. If that claim is true, then Fanny did not financially benefit. The problem with this story is that it would have involved Fanny having thousands of dollars in cash on hand. She explained this by saying that she kept a lot of cash based on advice she had received from her father. Defense attorneys pointed out that it is unusual for a person to have thousands of dollars of cash lying around, and there was no record of these cash reimbursements. At the time I am making this video, the judge has not yet ruled on whether Fanny will be disqualified. The judge said that Fanny should be disqualified if evidence is produced demonstrating an actual conflict or the appearance of one. This is not Fanny's first time in this type of trouble. In July of 2022, she was blocked from developing a case against an alleged fake Donald Trump elector named Burt Jones because she hosted a fundraiser for one of Burt's political rivals. Regardless of the outcome of the February 2024 disqualification hearing, it represented a substantial embarrassment and has focused negative attention on Fanny's personality, motives, and credibility. 
Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, Fanny's testimony during the hearing featured combative behavior, a childish attitude, and bizarre statements. Here are just a few examples of what some consider to be problematic behavior on the part of Fanny. Fanny stormed up to the stand when the issue of her testifying was being debated. She initially had resisted the idea of testifying before dramatically changing her mind. Her mannerisms made her appear defiant and agitated. Fanny objected during parts of her testimony. That's not something one typically observes from witnesses, even if those witnesses are attorneys. If she was not happy being a witness and wanted to assume another role, it would have been more expedient if she pretended to be the judge and simply dismissed the motions. Fanny attempted to reframe and redirect questions that were being asked to her. Her answers were long-winded, rambling, and involved unnecessary details. Some of her tangents communicated how she was disgusted with the hearing. It seemed clear that she had a particularly high level of contempt for the defense attorneys, referring to them as confused and intrusive. At one point she said, don't be cute with me. On another occasion, she told an attorney to stop yelling at her when no one was yelling. In a strange move, reminiscent of Jack Nicholson's famous you can't handle the truth line from A Few Good Men, Fanny proclaimed, quote, you think I am on trial? These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial, unquote. Fanny often started talking when she didn't appear to have a complete thought formed, like she reacted emotionally and just wanted to say something, even if that statement made no sense. This is not a good tactic, and I wouldn't expect to see this from an attorney. When answering a question about whether Nathan visited her residence, Fanny started talking about how she had to move out of that residence because she had been threatened. Presumably, she was referring to being threatened by Donald Trump supporters. This was yet another dramatic and unnecessary detail that only made her look argumentative, petty, and irrational, like it's impossible for her to create a conflict of interest because she was a victim of something once. Other details made Fanny look like she was rambling. For example, when explaining a trip to Napa Valley with Nathan, she talked about how she did not like wine, rather, gray goose. When Fanny was asked about Nathan's reason for ending the romance, Instead of offering a straightforward answer, she stated, quote, The only thing a woman can do for him is make him a sandwich, unquote. She also said, quote, We would have brutal arguments about the fact that I am your equal, unquote. When asked why she didn't want to continue the relationship, Fanny said, quote, I don't need anything from a man. A man is not a plan, unquote. Overall, Fanny's behavior was consistent with being arrogant, condescending, easily frustrated, manipulative, vindictive, petty, defiant, grandiose, self-centered, and evasive. She also demonstrated a sense of entitlement and an inability to form rational arguments. It was almost like Fanny was too good to have her reputation and credibility challenged. The entire experience was beneath her. Item number two, Fanny is in a terrible position due to her romantic relationship with Nathan and her disastrous behavior on the stand. Obviously, many people who support Donald Trump were not members of the Fannie Willis fan club to start with, but even some of those who dislike Donald Trump are angry with Fannie. It appears as though she is jeopardizing what many consider to be an important prosecution. There are legitimate questions about her credibility and decision-making process. Why did she get involved in the relationship in the first place? Was it really that important to be with this particular man? Why didn't she simply disclose the relationship prior to being accused of creating a conflict? Why not voluntarily resign and let someone else take over the case? And why did she fail to demonstrate ownership of her behavior? There is the sense that the case is being jeopardized by an incompetent and emotionally invested prosecutor when another more mature prosecutor could do a much better job. Perhaps one who understands the phrase without passion or prejudice. That term was also used in the movie A Few Good Men it was recited by Kevin Bacon. Item number three. This hearing was a victory for Donald Trump and his co-defendants, regardless of the outcome. If Fanny is disqualified, the prosecution will be delayed until the election is over, if it moves forward at all. If she is not disqualified, her behavior will cast doubt on the proceedings and on a conviction, if that is the outcome. 
Many people will view this case as permanently tainted. Moving to the final item, number four. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. I believe that Fanny created a conflict of interest. As far as her testimony, I'm not confident she is telling the truth about everything. Perhaps her romantic relationship with Nathan did start after he was hired, but the financial component creates a problem for her. I find it very difficult to believe that she had thousands of dollars of cash lying around to reimburse Nathan for the vacation expenses, and conveniently, there are no records of those reimbursements. Even if she is telling the truth about everything, there is no excuse for creating even the appearance of a conflict of interest. This is not a good idea ever, but especially not when the stakes are so high. Fanny should be disqualified. She has proven herself to be impulsive, irresponsible, and hypocritical. If the prosecution of Donald Trump is really about defending democracy and not a political attack, Fanny should have had more respect for the case. There was no point in fanning the flames. Those are my thoughts on the case of Fanny Willis. Please put any opinions or thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.